New day, new creepypasta. This time we're going for the puppeteer. Here's the thing, though. I've seen a couple of stories mention him before, but I don't remember his backstory to the full extent. So, I don't even bo want to bother... I don't even want to bother uh, trying to hurt my head, trying to remember his backstory, so let's just get into it together, shall we? Alrighty, I believe now is the time to get into the backstory of the Puppeteer. And unfortunately for me, I'm not too familiar with Puppeteer, so this will be somewhat a new creepypasta for me. So here we go. They call me the Puppeteer. Quote from the Puppeteer. You're alone here, aren't you? Common phrase. And then, I'm your only friend. Another common phrase. The Puppeteer is the titular central antagonist of the creepypasta story of the same name, The Puppeteer, and is featured in other creepypastas. The Puppeteer is a vengeful spirit who feeds on loneliness and depression. He targets the emotionally fragile, using them for his own gain and power. He will stalk a victim for a certain period of time, slowing... Slowing... Tw wait, why does it say slowing? Slowly twisting them into believing that there is no way from escaping life's torment other than death. Although the puppeteer works alone his uh, works alone with his two unwilling proxies, Zachary and Emra are used in special occasions for when he needs a quick snack. They will seclude the victim in different ways, making the hunt much easier for the puppeteer. The demonic poltergeist was once a normal teenage boy by the name of Jonathan Blake who, after a horrible breakup with the love of his life, secluded himself away from human contact. When he found no reason to continue, he locked himself in a room and hung himself, leaving his body to be found a few weeks later. But Blake's spirit awoke once more, filled with wrath and anger as he transformed into the vicious spirit known as the Puppeteer. Seen as his life was filled with decisions others made for him, with Within the afterlife, the ghost was finally able to take control of his own life and choices. Believing a standard human name wouldn't suit him any longer, he renamed himself as the Puppeteer, to work behind the curtains and control humans the same way someone would control a puppet would become his reason to exist. The Puppeteer is described as being lean and tall, standing at 6 foot 3. He has an in intimidating demeanor, his style of clothing is grungy-like, sporting a black trench coat hoodie, undershirt, jeans, sneakers, and beanie. After awakening as the puppeteer, his original light-tanned skin had turned gray. His hair color also changed from dark brown to jet black, and his eyes are now golden yellow. Brown was his original eye color. The puppeteer has two body forms, one where he is completely transparent, and one where he's able to produce a, sol a very solid form. The transparent apparition is where he's the most presentable with. In this form, he can stalk and prey upon his victims without spending too much energy. Meanwhile, with the solid form, he's only able to become completely solid when he needs to grab a hold of something or someone. This is used mostly when he finishes a kill. Tears and saliva stain, uh, tears and saliva stains around his eyes and mouth. His arms are two well-crafted doll prosthetics. Wait, what? I cannot tell. As Jonathan Blake, he was a very withdrawn person and an introvert, but he also had a very creative soul. He took good care of his four younger siblings when their parents were away, but now as the puppeteer, he is extremely manipulative, charming, and a smooth talker to his victims. He is also narcissistic, greedy, cruel, stubborn, and only does everything for his own gain. For most killers, it comes down to quantity over quality. Puppeteer is the opposite. He, take his, uh, he takes his time finding a vulnerable target and spends weeks following them around. In rare cases, it may take up to several months. 
the more exposed they are to his presence, the faster they fall into depression. The puppeteer will do his best to persuade them that there's nothing worth living for, and his way of ending their loneliness is going to be the best thing that's ever happened to them. Once they've reached the point of where they can't handle reality or their feelings any longer, Puppeteer gives them an ultimatum, to be killed by him or continue their self-loathing self ways to which they often agree with. If they choose to be killed, Puppeteer will use various ways to finish them off. Some including strangulation by his strings, having them jump to their death, or anything that comes to his mind at the time. The hallucinations they'll have during an act can vary from either him breaking their bones, dancing with them, or pulling out their muscle. <sighs> Pulling out their muscle? Ay, ay, ay. Okay then. To any outside eyes, the victim's death will be presented as suicide. This often results in a domino effect, and from there he can continue to the next victim. Once he gets bored, he will move to another area and start from scratch. His murderous tendencies stemmed from when his own energy would run low rendering him unable to function properly. Starting out, he would often spend little time chasing down his victims and just kill them on the spot, which always resulted in not being completely fed in the end. Energy lasting for about three to five days, he slowly learned that spending more time with his victims would result in the energy he gained from that kill lasting a longer period of time, two to three weeks. The more depressed a victim is essentially results in an easier way to leech off of the negative energy provided. However, his real reason for killing lays much deeper than just gaining energy to function. In a way, he wishes to bring upon others that he once experienced and felt as a human. He feels betrayed, and instead of working through his bitterness, he acts out upon others to bring them down the same way. Granted, with a stubborn mind, the puppeteer can endure long periods of just waiting for things to happen. He has never been one to rush things, even if the situation would call for it. Being a master of persuasion, he can often twist the minds of victims causing them to see things from his point of view. The puppeteer is very skilled with handling his strings as a weapon and an overall tool for when needed. They are able to pierce through flesh if needed, but not any other material such as wood, metal, concrete. As he needs to be able to sustain and hold the weight of his victims, his strings are fairly strong and will not snap easy. If the strings were to break under some circumstance, Puppeteer would feel the pain as if he was wounded in another limb of his. The strings are made from the same ectoplasm as his insides are. Therefore, he's able to produce the strings through any other place of his body as well. He's been seen to produce strings through places like his mouth and nostrils as well, though this surely felt very uncomfortable for him. The strings can reach a length of about 15 meters, which is 50 feet, and hold up to around 200 kilograms in weight, 440 pounds. So it's all able to hold up to almost double my weight. Got it. Because I'm a sin. Last time I checked, I think I was around 230, 240 pounds. Due to his ghostly form, the puppeteer is extremely vulnerable to any kind of exorcisms or paranormal resistance. In theory, he could easily be trapped or completely erased if a successful ex uh, exorcism were to occur. He is sensitive to light, that reason alone acts as to why he is usually active during the late hours of the night. One of his minor weaknesses is salt. The puppeteer was created by Bleeding Heart Works. He was 20 years old at, the time of, at his time of death. His birthday is July 25th, 1974. He died on November 30th, 1994. The puppeteer has two proxies named Emra and Zachary. Every time the puppeteer starts remembering his past life and who he once was, he goes into a state of confusion and anger. Realizing the monster he's become tears away at him until he completely breaks down. He tries his best to eventually forget the past, repressing the memories until he goes back to his normal self. That's why he won't always listen to anyone calling him Jonathan and will every time answer with, Who's Jonathan? The puppeteer cries and bleeds a golden-colored ectoplasm that will turn black over time. This ectoplasm stains anything it, it touches, hence the tear stains down his face. There's virtually no way to wash it out. Once reborn into the afterlife, the puppeteer made himself into what he deemed as his perfect self. A smoother face, longer hair, and a better-built body. This choice was made solely for the reason of attracting more humans, 
like an angler fish would lure other fish with their brightly colored lights. That's a good analogy right there. When the puppeteer started his murderous spree, he felt a change in his limbs and his own arms started to slowly generate into a pair of wooden arms. The puppet arms that had replaced his own arms are a clear sign that the murderous spirit is slowly becoming what he creates. The puppeteer can cannot teleport. He's a wanderer. When he needs to go anywhere, he will walk or float to his destination. He's able to morph through solid objects, but this takes him a lot of energy and effort, so he doesn't find himself to do it more than necessary. Alright, so obviously we have this, uh, the picture right here of Puppeteer as the original. As far as fan art goes, I'll probably do a couple of pictures here and there. Uh, oh, what the heck? Oh my god, this... That's actually a good look. Hold up. Let me get a good glimpse of this one. That is actually a good looking picture right there. And you see the strings wrapped around the arms of the victims as well. I see one right here. It's wrapped around the neck. All the limbs and such. Oh my god. That is so good. Oh, what's this picture right here? Is there... Us. Apparently, from this picture right here, there's some kind of uh, friendship going on. Okay. That's the tiniest picture possible. Okay. Even though it's blurry as hell, I assume there's some kind of friendship going on between Puppeteer here and Bloody Painter. Bloody Painter was covered like half a month. Yeah. So Bloody Painter was back on the 15th, and this is Puppeteer. Puppeteer's today should be the 29th when this comes out. Oh boy, how time flies. Hey you, yes you, behind the camera. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Hey, this entire month of October 2022, there's going to be one creepypasta video a day throughout the entire month. So... If you don't want to miss the chance of catching the next one being uploaded, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notification. And if you really liked this video, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Put a comment down below, tell me what you thought of it. But other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.